Hi, welcome to the maths class standard 10. Today we are going to discuss the first part of our chapter 2 circles and the topic is right angle and circle. Let's first try to draw a right triangle with its hypotenuse 4 centimeters. Now since it's a right triangle one of its angles is surely 90 degrees. So it's enough that the other two angles some of the other two angles is 90 degrees. So let's try to draw it. We draw a line 4 centimeters. We take an angle at one end and in the other end we, it's, necess it's enough to take 90 minus that angle. Just like I have drawn here. Please see the figure. Now we know that this is not the only right triangle with hypotenuse 4 centimeters. We can draw many other triangles like this. For example, look at the angle triangles that I have drawn. All these are right triangles with its base 4 centimeters, that is with the hypotenuse 4 centimeters. See an interesting fact about these right triangles. Put the base of all the right triangles together and you will notice something interesting. Yeah. Yeah, children, right. See, all the third vertices form a circle around that hypotenuse. The hypotenuse can be taken as the diameter of that semicircle. Now we can actually see how right triangles form a circle. See this animation done in GeoGebra. Why do these points lie on a circle? Let us think. I have drawn a circle and a triangle inside the circle, taking the base of the triangle as the diameter. Now what we have to prove is that the third vertice, that is point P, is a right angle. Let me join the points P and O, which is the center of the circle. Now we get two triangles. And you can see that the angle P is split into two angles. Let us consider one of the angles as X and the other angle as Y. Now consider the first small triangle OPA. OP and OA are radius. So that means it is an isosceles triangle. So we have two angles X. Now look at the other triangle OPB. Similarly, OP and OB are radii and we have another angle Y at B. Now all of you know that the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Let us consider the full triangle APB. What are the angles of triangle APB? Angle A which is X degrees, angle B which is Y degrees and angle P which is X plus Y degrees. Adding all three of these angles we need to get 180 degrees. So I write a statement like this, x plus y plus x plus y is equal to 180 degrees. We can rewrite it as x plus x plus y plus y is equal to 180 degrees. Now that is 2x plus 2y is equal to 180 degrees. Which means x plus y is equal to 90 degrees. And x plus y is the angle at P which we needed to prove. 
Now this surely means that an angle in a semicircle is right. Children, we have just found out that any angle in a semicircle is a right angle. Now, does that mean any angle inside a semicircle is not a right angle? Let us see. See the figure that I have drawn. I have drawn a circle and its diameter and I have marked a point P inside the circle. Let us join that point to the ends of the diameter to make a triangle. We have to check if the angle P is a right angle. Let me extend AP to Q a point on the circle and then I join Q and B. Now as we have studied earlier we know that Q is an angle in a semicircle and that is 90 degrees it's a right angle. Surely from the picture you can see that angle P is more than 90 degrees. So this leads us to the result that the angle inside a circle is always greater than 90 degrees. Children, now what about the point P going outside the circle? See the figure that I have drawn. I have drawn a circle and a diameter of the circle and P is a point outside the circle. Let me join the ends of the diameter to P and we get the triangle APB. We have to find out if angle P is a right angle. I have marked a point Q on the circle on the line AP such that AQB is the angle in a semicircle. And we are already familiar with such angles. We know that the angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. So surely from the picture it is clear that the angle P is less than 90 degrees which concludes that an angle outside the circle is always less than 90 degrees. Let's see what we have seen. An ang a point which is inside the circle always makes an angle which is greater than 90 degrees and a point which is outside the circle always makes an angle which is less than 90 degrees. This surely means that if the point is only on the circle, only then this angle will be 90 degrees. So we can uh, verify our fact that the angle in a semicircle is a right angle. Now see this figure. There are three triangles with the same base. Suppose we draw a circle with a bottom line as the diameter. What do you think about the top vertex of the first triangle? It's seen in the picture that the top vertex is 110 degrees. And surely that vertex will be inside the circle. What about the second triangle? The top vertex of the second triangle is 90 degrees. And so, the angle in a, uh, in, in a semicircle is 90 degrees and so the top vertex will surely fall on the circle. What about the third triangle? The angle shown is 70 degrees and we know that if the angle is less than 90 degrees, the point will be outside the circle. So the third vertex of the third triangle will be outside the circle. You can check from the figure. See? Correct? Now look at this question. If circles are drawn with each side of a triangle 5 centimeters, 12 centimeters and 13 centimeters as diameters then with respect to each circle where would be the third vertex? The triangle is of sides 5 centimeters, 12 centimeters and 13 centimeters. We need to check whether the circles drawn with these sides as diameters 
will have the third vertex inside that circle, outside the circle or on the circle. See I have drawn a rough figure of the triangle. The sides are 5 centimeters, 12 centimeters and 13 centimeters. Surely if I take the 5 centimeters as the diameter and draw a circle, the point will be, the third vertex will be surely outside the circle. It's easily seen. What about taking the 12 centimeters as the diameter? Will the third vertex be outside the circle or inside the circle or on the circle? For this we need to think a bit more. The sides of the triangle are 5 centimeters, 12 centimeters and 13 centimeters. Isn't that a Pythagorean triplet children? 5, 12, 13 is a Pythagorean triplet. Which means that if we take the perpendicular sides as 5 and 12, we get the hypotenuse as 5 squared plus two, 12 squared. That is 169 which is square of 13. That means that 5 and 12 are the perpendicular sides and 13 is the hypotenuse of the triangle, of the right triangle. Now let us first consider taking 13 as the diameter. 13 is the hypotenuse and opposite the hypotenuse we have the right angle. So surely, if we draw a circle with 13 as diameter, the third vertex will be on the circle since it falls on a right angle. Now in a right, angle, right triangle, one angle is 90, which means the sum of the other two angles is also 90, or which means the other two angles will be surely less than 90 degrees. So that means... Whether you take 5 centimeters as diameter or 12 centimeters as diameter, the third angle will be less than 90 degrees. Which surely means that the third vertex will be outside the circle. Let's see another question. Prove that the two circles drawn on two equal sides of an isosceles triangle as diameters pass through the midpoint of the third side. An isosceles triangle is a triangle which has two sides equal. See I have drawn an isosceles triangle. The two sides of the triangle are equal. And you can also see the perpendicular bisector of the isosceles triangle from the third vertex. We know that it forms right angles on the third side, the base. And also it goes through the midpoint of the third side. Now let's see what we have to prove. We have to prove that if we draw a circle with taking one of the equal sides as diameter, the circle drawn will pass through the midpoint. In the figure, we can see that when I drew the perpendicular bisector. The isosceles triangle has split into two right triangles. Consider the first right triangle. If I draw a circle with one of the equal sides, with that, that, that equal side as the diameter, we know that the 90 degree angle will fall on the circle, just as I have drawn in the figure. The same thing happens on the other equal side. When I take the other side as the diameter, the other equal side as the diameter, the circle drawn will fall on the 90 degree point, which is the midpoint of the isosceles triangle also. So hence, we can conclude here that the two circles drawn on the two equal sides as diameters will pass through the midpoint of the third side. Today we have studied about the topic right angle and circles. 
Now, why don't you try to do these questions by John Sir, who is an eminent figure in the field of teaching math. John Sir is also a familiar figure with the maths blog viewers. Now, note down these questions and try to do them. I'll be back with the answers in our next session. Bye-bye. Okay,